Hello BookTube. Today for Tag Thursday, I'll be doing the Western Canon Book Tag. This tag was created by Aaron Facer, and I will have a link to his uh, channel in the show notes down below. This tag was created some months ago, so I don't know exactly who all has done the tag, um, but if you would like to do it, um, consider yourselves tagged. And I want to say, was there another Western Canon book tag like a few years ago? I could have sworn I saw one, but I'm not seeing it, so maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, let's get on with this tag. So the idea is to pick a number of uh, books. Um, Aaron picks 25. I'm picking... Uh, Aaron picked 20. I'm picking 25. Um, sorry for that flub, but I'm not going to stop this video and start over again. I've already done that about four times. So if I have to do it again, yeah. Well, there's going to be a bit of an issue with uh, my plans for tomorrow. But anyway, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. So prompt number one. If you could choose 20, 25 books to represent your reading of Western literature, how would you choose them? What would you look for? So I had initially planned on doing just 20 books. Um, and so my selection is largely probably rather traditional. It's 20 canonical works that I have read. Um, some that I like, some that I don't necessarily care for, um, but should be included. Um, although some of them I do like. Um, I also try to have a good mix of poetry and fiction and drama. Um, so that's kind of was my plan. So it's now 25 uh, works that I have read and that most of them I have enjoyed. Some of them more than others. And they are perhaps except for maybe with two inclusions probably fairly traditional for um, Western canon. Although, you I mean, you could really pick any work that's like been written in the West, but I'm in a bit more traditional for this. Um, anyway, so prompt number two. After choosing your 20 books, 25 books, um, or 25 works, what blind spots have you noticed? So, let me switch to the um, num uh, to the list. So I have a pretty good uh, representation of the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, with um, six uh, works on here. Um, I have one Italian. Uh, some, one work of Old English, and a whole heap of, um, English. <laughs> Both, um, English and American. So, my blind spots are, well, there are no Romans, and... I mean, and I haven't really read a whole lot of Roman literature. It's really only the Aeneid and the Metamorphoses. And I'm not terribly fond of either one of them. Um, I haven't read nearly as much of um, European literatures outside of, or European language literatures outside of English. Um, which is something that I would like to 
kind of maybe give a focus on, although I don't quite know where I would start. Um, with that, I mean, Italian, uh, Spanish, French, German, Russian, Greek, other languages. Um, and then as far as like zeroing in more on the English language stuff, um, there's one Old English, uh, one Medieval, and um, sticking those two together, um, I, I, I've read some. I mean, I've never taken a specific class, and I've never really read all that deeply in Medieval English literature. I, I'm a bit more interested in it as an inspiration for contemporary epic fantasy than I am the actual literature of the period. Um, I have quite a bit of um, the Renaissance, and I have read fairly heavily in the English Renaissance. I mean, I've taken... Oh... Well, let's see here. Um, I think I've taken three um, classes devoted to the English Renaissance. One was a Shakespeare exclusive class, but I also took two um, general Renaissance classes, that, uh, one that was relatively earlier in the period and one that was later in the period. Um, although my list doesn't necessarily include a huge amount of those works, but I did. Um, I'm not as familiar with the period between sort of, say, the Restoration through to the Romantics. Um, I do have one, no, I have two works on here that kind of go in that period, but I haven't really read as widely there. Um, the 19th century, I'm fairly, like, I guess not as well read as I could be, but I, I have some uh, works on here from there. I mean, and probably, I mean, given that the sheer n a number of works, it's no matter what, it would be a bit of a blind spot. Um, as far as American lit's concerned, I have quite a bit in the 19th century, particularly the later part. Um, there's, uh, excuse me, uh, nothing really in like before the 1840s, um, which is a bit of a blind spot for me. Um, but I do have quite a bit of like the later 19th century and into the 20th century, which then becomes more of a blind spot for um, English literature. And I have two works of um, science fiction to round out the list. Um, but I guess one thing that is um, interesting is how difficult the um, um, adding like works of like individual works of poetry, particularly lyrical lyric poetry. Uh, and drama to these kinds of lists are. But anyway, but I guess one thing about like trying to correct the blind spots um, is that I, I'm not necessarily in a sustained mood to really read the classics. Um, like I've said several times in previous videos, I'm, there was a period in my life from about 17 to 23, 24, where I was really interested in reading the classics, the canonical, um, and their modern and contemporary sort of candidates for inclusion eventually. Most of them probably won't make it, but I've kind of grouped them all together into 
what I call classics, canonical, modern, and contemporary fiction, poetry, and drama. I always like that little dramatic ending there. Um, but since then, I mean, the bulk of my reading, the bulk of my interest has been science fiction and fantasy. I mean, that's changed significantly in the last few years. But not that much. Um, I, do, I mean, I periodically get a desire to re-engage with the, with the canon with um, works that the a good number of people who sort of curate the canon tend to gravitate towards as possible candidates, even though for the most part, they're not actually going to make it into the canon. But anyway, um, that I, 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 I get these periodic urges to engage. I mean, particularly to where I me, mean, but they don't last. And I mean, it's also, I guess, that's bundled up with the questions about my collection, my personal library, in that what should it look like? Um, so, yeah, so I don't know necessarily if when I might try to work on these blind spots um, because I don't know it depends if I'm in a like what mood I'm in to particularly pick them up and to eventually read them so yeah anyway now on to the final prompt prompt number three what 2025 books would you choose to represent your reading of Western literature. So these are the 25. Okay. So at number one, I have the Iliad. And at number two, the Odyssey. I love both of them, the Iliad more so than the Odyssey. I also have the Theogony by Hesiod, um, which is a wonderful poem about uh, the creation of the universe and the birth of the gods, according to uh, Greek mythology. I also have the Oresteia by Aeschylus, which is about um, the murder of Agamemnon by his queen Clytemnestra and her own eventual murder at the hands of her son Orestes and his... Uh, sort of um, purification for that murder uh, through a trial overseen by Apollo and Athena. I also have uh, the works of Sappho, which I'm not entirely sure how I could have added that, so I just put Sappho. And also Antigone by, I think it's Sophocles, um, which I, ne I have never actually read. I watched a performance of, which was pretty good. Um... And it's about the aftermath of the Seven Against Thebes. I also have the sonnets of Petrarch, who was an Italian Renaissance poet that was, I think, uh, a contemporary-ish of Dante. And I had a collection of his um, sonnets ages ago, but I could, for the life of me, I do not recall the name, like the title of the book, because I have a list of um, books I had uh, from about 15 or more years ago that um, I'm missing a part of it. I know that for sure. And Petrarch is one of those missing books. I uh, also have Beowulf on here, which is, of course, one of the earliest works of English literature. Uh, and it's a favorite of mine. Um, I also have the Sir Gawain and the Green Knight um, at number nine. And I, it's been a very long time since I've read Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I remember kind of liking it, but probably not all that much. At number 10, I have Dr. Faust by Christopher Marlowe. Uh, this is a really great 
play. Um, it's been a long time since I've read it. Um, I have a collection of Marlowe's plays, but it would probably fall apart because the copy is very much battered. At number 11, I have Hamlet by William Shakespeare, which really does not need much comment except for probably one of his greatest plays and is actually one of those that I actually do rather like. At number 12, I'm sticking with a uh, drama with the Duchess of Malfi by uh, John Webster. Um, this is one of my favorite, well, I've only actually read two of his plays. Um, and this one is uh, brilliant. I really enjoyed it. Um, and number 13 is Paradise Lost by John Milton. This is an epic poem about um, Satan's rebellion. And I think in a list where you're trying to make like adding 20 or 25 canonical works, this would be on here. It's not necessarily a favorite of mine, but I wanted to add it. Um, at number 14 is Orinoco by Ephra Bain. Um, I really remember this uh, novel and novella quite fondly. Um, at 15 is Bleak House by Charles Dickens. It's one of the few works of Dickens that I've read, and I quite like it. Um, although I have not gone back to it in ages. At 16, I have North and South by uh, I'm blinking on her. I think it's Elizabeth Gaskell, um, which I read around the same time I read Bleak House. And it's the only thing by Gaskell, Gaskell that I've ever read. And I remember it quite fondly. But I haven't read it in ages. At 17 is Tristram Shandy by Tobias Mallet, I think. Um, I read this for a class. I mean, quite a few of these I read for a class. And I didn't like it much, but I wanted to add something from this period. <laughs> Otherwise, the 18th century would be completely empty. Be lovely. <laughs> uh, at 18 is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by... Mark Twain, this is one of the great American novels and is one that I quite enjoy. It's Again, it's been a very long time since I've read it, but it is amazing. At 19 is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, I, I think I quite liked it when I read it, but it's been ages since... I've read it and I don't really feel uh, interest in actually reading it again. <laughs> but again, I mean, it's, yeah, like I said, I really don't have that urge, really. Um, at 20 is The Country of Pointed Furs by Sarah Orne Jewett. This is a wonderful little novella that. I read, I think I've read this, this a few times. It could have been in the 10 books that I've reread a few, several times, some that I still like. It could have been in there. And because I do remember it quite fondly, although it has been a very long time since I've read it. Because um, I think I only had it in, no. No, I actually had a little Dover edition of it, so. But I ended up getting rid of it, so I really would like to get some of her work back at some point. At 21 is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. This is another candidate for the Great American Novel. Um, and I, it's been a very long time since I've read it. It's been over, no, it's been about 20 years. Um, so don't quite remember it all that much and I am hoping to get to it at some point soon because I do actually have a new copy of it at 22 is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf this is an excellent novel probably one of the great 
English novels of the uh, 20th century. And it's been a very long time since I've read this one, too. Um, and I don't have a copy anymore. At 23 is Sweet Bird of Youth by Tennessee Williams. Um, Tennessee Williams is one of my favorite playwrights. And Sweet Bird of Youth is one of my favorite plays by him. At 24 is Dune by Frank Herbert. Um, I've gone at length about my complicated uh, relationship with Dune. So... I won't go into that here. And at 25 is Perdido Street Station by China Mievel. Uh, one of the greatest uh, works of fantasy and science fiction to come out of the early 21st century. So that was my list. Again, if you would like to do this tag, consider yourself tagged. I will be back tomorrow afternoon early with weekly reads. Because I think I'm just going to read either uh, a poetry collection or a volume or two of manga. I haven't quite decided yet. Probably it'll be the manga, but I don't know. Um, and then the later video will be my Q&A response. Like the, my Q&A video. So in a book tube until I see you tomorrow. Thank you. Have a great uh, afternoon and stay safe.